Now I would like to invite Dr. Francois Tardieu and he will be introducing the conference topic. So Francois, please. Please join me in welcoming Francois. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. So, welcome to Interdrought. <laughs> it's amazing. So, Interdrought is a society we began relatively small, and now we are 940 something people. I just invite you during breaks to come here and imagine the whole room full of people interested in our topics. So this is amazing and thank you for coming. It's important that uh, there are 700 people from developing countries. Is it okay? Okay. And it's certainly important that we are in India. India is uh, one of the biggest country in the world and trap by drought. So let's begin the Indian drought conference with this amazement of having so many people and so many good delegates. I won't spend too much time stating that climate change and high temperature and evaporative demand have never been as crucial as today. Whoever has uh, read the last IPCC report uh, two years ago, can be really frightened of the risk of drought, the risk of high temperature. There has been the COP21 conference that say that perhaps this RPC 2.6 scenario will be hopefully the good one, but there is still the good possibility that in, we run in real troubles. So we know that. Okay, so. Yeah, this is better. We know that. We know also that uh, this question is debated, but we are here for science. But we know that as a community, we have to convey some political messages. I will go back to that at the end of this presentation. We also all know, and it's probably not useful to spend much time, that this climate change is in conflict with an increasing demand for food security, for green chemistry, for fibers, etc. So agriculture is in front of a big, big challenge. So it's probably time for this conference, fifth Interdrought conference. Again, it's science focused. We are here to discuss of science. But we know that as citizens, there are plenty of issues that our science uh, involves uh, for future, for our future and the future of our children. So, into drought has begun, actually in Montpellier, but it was a European project, a very small conference in Montpellier in 1995. And we owe to two eminent people, eminent personalities, actually 10 years afterwards, to say, well, we absolutely need to have somewhere in which the general community for drought can meet and discuss. So these two personalities are first Abraham Bloom. Abraham could not come here. He is uh, unfortunately ill. We all hope that he will be better. And the second is here, well, and alive, uh, is Roberto Tuberosa. So I think that for these two people who really gave birth to Interdrought, please join me to, to thank them and say that. Because really, we, we owe them this conference, series of conference. So the first conference was in Rome. 
And then there has been one in Shanghai, and Abraham was uh, still the, the chair of the conference. Then in Perth in 2003. And here we are in Hyderabad, and again with this huge success. So this huge success is largely due to Rajiv. So we have shared with Rajiv the responsibility for this conference. So Rajiv has done the scientific work with me. And on top of that, a lot of work. So can you again thank Rajiv? Because for those who don't know, Rajiv is not only an Anu, also, is Anu right? Yeah. Uh, Anu is also a very bright scientist. So for those of you who think, think that, yeah, but all of those are scientists and Rajiv is not only here to solve problem of visas and uh, hotels, Rajiv is an eminent scientist. <laughs> And the next conference will be in the United States. I will tell something about that at the end of this presentation. Right, so into drought has a special DNA uh, from the very beginning. And I will take some quotes of things that have been said in different into drought conferences. So, First, and this was actually in the, in the very first Interdrought conference, John Pasura. Probably many of us know John. He is from Australia in Canberra. Said that the cactus is more drought tolerant than the carnation. But once we have said that, when we look at cropland, the feature that confer drought tolerance are far from clear. And we all know that. Another great contributor to Interdrought is Graham Hammer who said uh, some about 10 years ago, we anticipate that uh, the availability of, of models, knowing that we don't know exactly what drought is, what drought turns is, models are capable of uh, navigating biological complexity. And this will change everything. And uh, you will see a lot of modeling here in into drought. And if I can join this list, we just uh, with a nasty uh, comment, I wrote some years ago that actually any trait, any allele, if you are bright enough, you can just think in a drought scenario in which this allele will bring drought terms. So is it good to have good big leaves? Yes, in some drought, not in some other leaf. Is it good to close tomato? Is it good to have small roots, big roots? It depends. And probably in the DNA of into drought. This it depends is absolutely crucial. Drought torrent alleles are context dependent. And this is a statement, but this is also the organization of the conference. Of course, all of us, we are specialists of something. I'm an agronomist, ecophysiology, they are genomicists, they are everything. But if we want to study drought turns, whatever it is, we need to have at least some understanding of many things. Of course, we will not be specialists of everything, but we need to know what are the physical constraints associated with drought. We need to know what are the scenarios of drought in current and future conditions. We know that turns to drought probably doesn't mean much, and turns to scenarios of drought mean something more precise. We need to have some idea of the main controls of plant level, some mechanism, time scale, level of organization, emergent properties, etc. We need to know something about that. Genetic architecture of all these traits, QTL, genomic prediction, epigenetics, interactome, blah, blah, blah. And last but not least, cropping system. We know that our beloved genotypes will be in cropping system. So whenever we have a new genotype, we have to adapt all the cropping system the techniques. And this is exactly the reason why I go from introduction to material and methods, of course. So the material of methods of inter-drought is that we have one session for all topics. 
So it is quite unusual format for conferences. Usually you meet your mates, you have 100 people in the room, everybody knows each other, and we can talk seriously. Here the format is different. The model is that each of us, we have different disciplines, we come from different places, uh, we have different ideas, and we will hear all topics regardless of our own discipline. So, uh, this is very important. This makes life a little bit more complex, I will go back to that. But we thought it is important that every, each of us hears everything. Just because I said uh, draft turns involves a lot of things, so at least once every fourth year we hear everything, and then we'll go back to specialized seminars. So we'll have long talks, 25 minutes, and uh, we have asked all speakers to spend about eight minutes setting the scene, so every each of us, even if we know nothing on ABS signaling or cropping system or whatever, we have the broad picture, and hopefully this will be uh, the case. We have selected short talks of eight minutes on specialist topics of uh, main interest. So here they will go straight to a point and uh, we'll hear a lot of things. Very importantly, there are long poster sessions for presentations. So we can here discuss between us because discussing with uh, 900 people is not the easiest thing to do, but here we'll have this possibility and we have facilitated discussion at the end of each session. To be honest, this will be an experience per se. So, the sessions, again, setting the biophysical context. This is essential. Drought is physical by nature, and we need all to have some understanding of that. Maximizing dry land production, where are we going from phenotyping point of view, from a breeding point of view, from G by E by management point of view. And then we have a series of sessions, plant productivity and the drought. So one about effective capture of water, everything that is roots, aquaporins, etc. Transpiration efficiency. So in different contexts, genetic variability, hormones, plant productivity with uh, vegetative growth. So what are the physiological control of growth uh, of root and shoots? Reproductive development. Uh, reproductive development receives finally less interest than many other traits, although it's essential. So we'll have a session on that. And finally, breeding for water limited environment so we change scale so we go to breeding and we have asked eminent scientists to tell success stories in different environments and uh, I, I guess this will be extremely important and then again uh, agronomic management we have to ag adapt the agronomy to our genotypes the genotypes to our agronomy and we see the definition of cropping system and last but not least, we'll have a closing session in which we try to share what was important. So normally, the, the normal thing is to have all crocodiles like myself saying this was the most important thing in this conference. So sorry, I, I will do that anyway. But we have also asked young scientists, a panel of young scientists to, to give some ideas. So, uh, the take-home messages. Discussion, results. So probably we don't want to reach consensus. We are from different disciplines. So probably some things become more and more consensus and it will be welcome if this happens. And for the rest of it, it might be debate rather than consensus than we want. So we are from different disciplines, it's just normal that we don't agree and conferences are just for exchanging and we don't expect that everybody agrees at any time. So we have one aim, draw turns, again, whatever it means, and many avenues for that, 
and we are here to fight each other, saying this approach is better than this approach, etc. And I'm sure that this will happen because this is just healthy and uh, this has to happen and uh, I'm sure it will happen. So the result, we hope, is that interactions between us will allow us to go back home with new and broadened ideas. Left alone, some degree of consensus that we can bring to the politicians but perhaps it's not the only thing. Okay. Discussion. Discussion. We have a problem here. Discussion, as I said, it's probably one of the main aim of such a conference, but having a discussion with 940 people is not the easiest thing to do. So this will be an experiment to see, it, and hopefully it works. So we have facilitated discussion at the end of each session, so we'll see how it turns out. Again, these long poster sessions are the occasion of interaction, and they are long on purpose, so we have time for that. We have seminar, we have had seminars today, and Thursday there is another series of seminars. We have left free time, so Indian beer is excellent, so we can have a lot of chats in front of the very good Indian beer that I could try yesterday. And again, uh, closing session, we have this forum with the young scientists and then uh, concluding views. Not the point to say this was the important thing in this conference, but again, to have several views and go home with some ideas. Special announcement, Interdrought is a society, so the society needs to, to live. So, for those who are interested in the life of this society, we'll have an Interdrought General Assembly on Saturday at 11.45. So you can, if you come, you can know how things are, how things are decided, and who will be the next chair and the next place for the conference. But I cannot say that now because I have to keep the secret. Conclusion. And if you allow me, I will do this conclusion from a very personal point of view. I must admit that five years ago, I would never have imagined that it's relevant to state that uh, we are lucky to be all together here. 55 countries, 300 organizations, no petty egoisms. We all know that we this was given for granted for me and probably for all of us. We know that there are political pressures now for even in my own country, it's not especially for one country, but we know that petty egoisms exist. I just hope that this type of conference, in we can exchange of science without any political, with political consequences, but not political constraints. I hope that just we can continue to have them. And I just want to have a special thought for some delegates who were to talk here or just participate here, and they just had to withdraw because they were afraid of not being able to come back home. So if you want, I would like to, to have a special thought for them. And more personal, but uh, perhaps a consensus. I think that none of us really believe that science is here, that the word is here, and that science alone can uh, solve everything, drought mitigation, etc. So we know that there are constraints. That's part of the game. There are economics, there are farmers, there are politics. That's fine. But I think we also all think that if we don't have a proper science and or if scientific facts are ignored, the system will fail. So no, we don't think that science is everything, but yes, we can claim all together that science is necessary, that has to be good science and has to be taken into account. And with that, I just always hope that uh, this conference will be a success for each of you.
This was wonderful, Francois. Thanks a lot for introducing the topic and also giving or showing very nice slides. So thanks once again, Francois, for all your help. He has been great help or uh, in managing the program, organizing those, uh, def defining the program and to all the different places. So thanks once again.